Thank you, Jesus.
family. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And uh, I hope you are, I know you're going to be blessed this morning listening to the Word of God. God will bless us as we uh, read His Word and uh, share this message. Let us pray together and ask God's blessings on His Word. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for uh, the opportunity we have to sit around your word, Father. Father, you're going to break the bread of life with us. Father, I ask that you open our spiritual ears, our spiritual eyes. Father, I ask that you will pour your spirit upon us, Father. Father, and bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, beloved, uh, today's message we're going to read out of Exodus 13 verse 17 to 22 the heading in my Bible is pillars of cloud and fire and it came to pass when Pharaoh that let the people go and God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines although that was near for God said lest preadventure the people repent when they see war and they returned to Egypt. What actually means is they didn't go through the way of the Philistines because they had to f perhaps fight them in, in battle. They would uh, want to go back to Egypt. Verse 18, But God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel went up, harnessed out of the land of Egypt. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the children of Christ, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. And they took their journey from Sukkoth and encamped in Ethan, the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night took not away the pillar of a cloud by day, or the pillar by night. Now the theme of my message is God's presence. We see that uh, the way to the promised land was a very difficult one. God gave them the fire in day and fire at night, cloud in the day and fire at night, to indicate that's God's presence that is there with them. The cloud gave them protection by day of the sun. Israel had to move when God moved. Those who went outside God's presence to sin, they perished. Now the desert represents the world. Israel represents you and me. We're not spiritual Israel, just remember that. We've got a new covenant with a better promise of everlasting life. But our journey on this earth is likened to Israel. God is present amongst His people. The cloud and fire represents God's glorious presence. The road God was leading Israel were not easy. God did not take the easy road. If you follow God, the road is not easy. Uh, Pharaoh actually thought that Israel were lost when he saw that they did not go the short route but they were wandering all on the edge of the Red Sea where eventually Pharaoh caught them and thought he was going to have an easy way with them. The road following God is sometimes not the easy one. Matthew 7 verse 13 says, Enter ye in a straight gate. Wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be with going there. 7 verse 14, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leaveth unto life, and few find it. Dearly brother and sister, beloved, I want to tell you that the, the, the road we take is sometimes not the easy one. If you decide to serve the Lord your God, and you make a decision in your life to follow Him, you will come against challenges, I tell you, that you, you, you might not even think of because the road we have to follow is not the easy one. The road is narrow and the, and the gate is small. 
When Pharaoh pursued them, he found them trapped against the sea. God performed one of the greatest miracles in the in 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 Bible and drowned the whole army of Pharaoh. I tell you, when Satan pursues you, God will deal with him. If you make a decision to follow God, if you make a decision and then the devil comes against you, God will deal with him if you stay in his presence. We should give over to Him, we should give over to God, we should give over to the Holy Spirit to follow Him. When God moves, Israel moves. When God stayed, Israel stayed. I tell you now, when God moves, you've got to move. When God stays, you need to stay. You need not to go outside God's presence. When you bow down and you pray and you receive God's presence, uh, you, you need to stay in His presence in your life. We have to practice His presence in our life. Israel were protected from a stun sun in the shadow of the cloud. If you live in His presence, He is your protection. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 3 says, But the Lord is faithful and He will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. There's three things that's being highlighted there. The first one is God is faithful. We serve a faithful God. He's never, he'll never change, he'll never forsake, never leave you. Hebrews 13 verse 5 said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. John 14 verse 16 said that he, the Holy Spirit, may abide with you forever. Romans 8 verse 38 and 36, For I am persuaded neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor power nor things present nor things to come. No height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ our Lord. I promise you today that God will never leave you nor forsake you. He is faithful and just. He will take care of you. If you made a decision to follow Him, He will take care of you and He will protect you. He will strengthen you. John 14 verse 16. And I will pray the Father and He shall give you another helper, another comforter. Acts 1 verse 8 he says, But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and ye shall witness me unto both Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to all the utmost parts of the earth. Uh, dearly beloved, we need to know that God is with us. We know when we follow him that he's there for us. He will protect you. The third one, Hebrews 13 verse 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what shall man do unto me. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 Be strong and of good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God is, is, is the he that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, For fear not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, I am thy God, I will strengthen thee, yes, I will help thee. I will uphold you with my right righteous hand, the right hand of my righteousness. Psalm 5 verse 11, he says, But let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy, because thou defends them. Let them also may love thy name, be joyful in thee. We see that uh, example of David that, f that followed God. We see so many trials and tribulations and, and traps that were set to him. But from everyone God has, has, has delivered him from. And he wrote this psalm and he, and, he, and, he, and, he, and he rejoiced in the Lord because the Lord has delivered him from the evil. The name is, uh, of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteousness runs in it and then is saved. Proverbs 18 verse 10 says, I tell you now, if you come against uh, any impossibilities in your life and you, and you are in the presence of God and you're staying in prison, you decided to follow Him. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You'll fight your battle on your, on your behalf. Through the fire, He protected Israel from cold and dangers at night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you feel it is dark, you're at a dark place. I tell you, when you bask in His presence, in the presence of God, He will carry you through. He will never leave you. He won't forsake you. 
When life is at its worst, He will, he will live in His presence. He will comfort you in the glow of His presence. I will tell you, dear family of God, if you stay in His presence, you stay in the presence of God and you, you are confronted with this dif difficulties, you will bask in the light. You will bask in the light of God. Hallelujah. He is the light of this world. He is the fire, the fire is the light in this world. John 14 verse 18 says, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. God will run to you, God will, 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 will come to you and, and, and help you. John 14 verse 26, but the Comforter which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have, I say unto you. You see, God has given us His Holy Spirit. He's given us the Comforter to strengthen us, to give us strength. If you decide to follow Him, if you decide to spend time in God's presence, He will comfort you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Hallelujah. He is the light in the darkness. I tell you, you won't stumble, you won't bump your feet in the darkness because He is the light. He's the light of this world. He is our light. He goes out before us and He illuminates. You know, when I went for a, a medical examination, they switched off this pacemaker of mine. And I found it was suddenly very dark. But I know my God will never leave me nor forsake me. I tell you the darkness will disappear when He enters into the light of your life. In the darkness in your life. Hallelujah. John 8 verse 12, Jesus spoke again and saying unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follow me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. He is our light. Jesus is our light. If you follow Him, He will light up your life. He shall light up your path. He will be with you. He will protect you. Amen. Psalm 36 verse 9, He says, For Thee is the fountain of life. In Thy light we shall see light. I see the, the, the place in, in the New Testament, God speaks to His disciples. He said, if the light in you is darkness, how dark isn't it inside of you? But it's not necessary. You see, He has given His Son to die on the cross for us. Uh, he has given the light of this world to take the sin away from the world. Uh, and He died for our sins on the cross, uh, the true light. And he has, becoming, he has become our light. Hallelujah. He's placed his light inside of us according to John 14 verse 20. And Colossians 1 verse 27. Because he has died on the cross. He has conquered darkness. The light came and he, he lives inside of us now. In his presence he will perform miracles. Hallelujah. We see there's 15 many miracles that God performed in a desert for Israel. The first one is the fire and the cloud, we moved, they moved. The parting of the Red Sea when they were attacked by Pharaoh, God parted the sea for them and when Pharaoh followed them, I tell you now, God opened the Red Sea and He swallowed in the whole army of Pharaoh. I think He gave Pharaoh such a huge blow that He destroyed the whole army of Pharaoh. Today when they look at that portion where they cross the Red Sea, they find chariots under, under the sea, uh, uh, covered with seaweed and, 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 and stuff. So, hallelujah. Fire and cloud, parting of the Red Sea, but the waters made sweet. We see at the place that where they came to a place where there's water, and the waters were bitter. And Moses uh, dropped his, 
die staaf in de het became sweet. The daily manna and quails that they had to eat from were daily. God performed miracles in their midst. I tell you now, God wants to perform miracles in our midst on a daily basis. Uh, the fact that we get up every morning and go to work, the fact that we are protected when we come back is God's miracles in our life. We see that water coming from a rock when Moses spoke to the rock uh, and, and, and there, were, there were water coming out. We see the second time he did that, that he struck the rock and water came out. The ground opened up and swallowed Korah. We were rebellious against God. I tell you now, God performed miracles on behalf of Israel. I tell you, God will perform miracles on your behalf because you've decided to follow Him. I tell you, God will perform miracles because you've decided uh, you will stay in His presence. In Jesus' ministry, Jesus performed 37 recorded miracles. We see that Jesus, uh, when you follow Him, when you follow Him, you will perform miracles in your life. John 14 verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do, the greater works than he shall he do, because I go to my Father. You see, some went outside of the camp to sin and died. Because they want to, you see, you cannot sin when you're in God's presence. Because His presence won't allow you to sin. They had to step out of His presence, out of the camp of Israel, to go and sin in a desert. But they perished, they died in a desert. Stay in God's presence. Romans 6 verse 23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. But we have a gift of God, and that is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, who died on a cross for us, who became the light of us. He has placed His presence, that's the seventh point, He placed His presence inside of you. John 14 verse 16, He says, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another comforter, that He abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth Him not, neither knoweth it Him. But you know Him, for He dwelleth within you, and shall be in you. Dearly beloved, you see that Israel, when they reached the promised land, they built a temple for God. And when God moved in a temple, it's as if they forgot about God because they started doing their nonsense things. They started to do their things that God not instructed them to do. But you see, God has got a different way. The plan he had was to put himself and his glory inside of us uh, to fill us. So that we are filled with the presence of God 24-7. I tell you now, God will never leave you nor forsake you. We are filled with the presence of God 24-7. He has decided to put himself inside of us. He says here in verse 18, I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world sees me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall also live. At that day you shall know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Dearly beloved, God has given His glorious uh, Spirit to come and live inside of us, to reside inside of us. In Him we live and move and have our being. I tell you now, if we realize that uh, God's glory is living inside of us through His Spirit, uh, uh, you, you will be confronted with these impossibilities, uh, but you will become go storming forward like a lion uh, because you know God's in His glory is inside of you and is He's inside of me. Hallelujah. 
Dearly beloved, be victorious. Realize that God has put His Son and His glory, His Holy Spirit, inside you and me. Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God that He lives with His glory inside of us. Uh, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to give your life to God. I'm going to do a prayer. You can pray after me. And after that, there's, there's a number that will appear. You can contact someone who will help you. Let us, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I commit my life to you. Father, I, I desire you to move in with your glory into my life. I confess all of my sins and I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. Amen, amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word that went out tonight. I ask, Father, that you will, uh, that you will speak to people, Father. Father, that you will be the after preacher of the word through your Holy Spirit. Bless us where we go out there in different ways. Protect us, guide us, and keep us, Father. Draw us closer to know you more in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. I trust that you are all well and blessed. What an amazing message, Pastor Tiams, in the presence of God. Hallelujah. There is no other place I would rather be than in the presence of my Almighty God. So, Pastor Tiams, thank you so much for blessing us with that message. We are highly encouraged. Amen. Our spirits are lifted, um, and we know that we have power in us to carry us forth for the next coming week. Hallelujah. It's time to give, everybody. So look at your neighbor, look at somebody next to you, um, and say, it's time to give. Hallelujah. So as we did last week, uh, we looked at a couple of points last week in terms of how to remain joyful in our giving. Amen. And we went through a few nuggets and we said we're going to do a series and on how to get ourselves to that point of being joyful in our giving amidst all the, the, the challenges that we are facing. Amen. So we want to do that. So last week we looked at a couple of nuggets. So I want this to be an interactive session today. Can we do that, church? Amen. Okay, so you've got your iPads and you've got your cell phones and you've got your laptops and there's a little thing that says chat on there. So you're going to chat with me on this link. Okay, amen. So how many of you remember what we looked at last week? Cool. We looked at God's. We looked at all of God's promises. Amen. So last week we looked at God's promises. We looked at the what's in it for us, but because we all want to see, we all want something in it. And we realize that with God, there is always something in it, even in your giving. Amen. So when we are faithful and we know that we become faithful tithers, it entitles us to these promises that God gave us. So there were three promises. There were three P's. What were the three P's? Quickly now, let's go. Let's type on our little fingers on there. What were the three P's that we talked about last week that were around God's promises? Hmm. Number one, he said that he will be our provider. That's it. Good. He'll be our provider. That he'll open the floodgates and he'll pour in more than we can ever imagine and hope for. Amen. Then he said that he will be our protector. He'll rebuke the devourer. These things won't come near our crops. Amen. And then thirdly, you will become a participant with God. And in order for us to see the full impact of the church in our lives, we needed to participate in this relationship with God. Amen. And I hope that you remember that. So today, let's pull out our pens and our papers and our, our diaries. And we're going to carry on with part two today. So today, we're going to look at the purpose the, of tithes and offering. We're going to look at why we need to give. Amen. Now, we, we, we read last week that in Deuteronomy 14.23, it says that the purpose of tithing is to teach us to always put God first in our lives. It doesn't need, God doesn't need our money. Amen. We understand that. But He wants what it represents. 
He wants what it represents in each of you, and that is your heart. He wants us to trust Him. Amen. And we see that the purpose of tithes and offering, there's three aspects again that I'm going to go into. Amen. And we're going to go into this very quickly. So please stay with me. The primary purpose of giving tithes and off offerings is to honor God. Amen. It's to trust Him. It's to honor God. And, and we see that when we offer up our material possessions to God, we are telling God that He is more important than any of our material go uh, goods. Proverbs 3 verse 9 tells us, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of thine increase. So the purpose that we give, number one, is to honor God. And that is very important, family. We need to honor God in our giving. Number two, we need to, we need to, to, to the purpose of giving a tithe and offering is to support the ministers of the gospel. Repeat after me, to support the ministers of the gospel. Yes, it takes you and it takes me in terms of supporting the ministers of the gospel. It also, we're going to look at not just supporting the ministers of the gospel, but together with that is linked evangelism and outreach. They all go hand in hand. Amen. And this is what we're going to look at. Preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ not only enriches the lives of the congregation, but it also enriches the community. So it enriches the, it has to enrich the ministers. Firstly, we've got to take care of the man of God in this house. He shouldn't be begging for bread. Amen. He shouldn't be uh, worried about how he's going to make his ends meet. Amen. An effective minister should be able to be supported by his congregation and not burdened by the survival and having his needs met. And it takes you and it takes me to do that. By our tithes and by our offerings, we can ensure that when our pastor, when he needs to sit in his car and he needs to drive down the road because we need counseling, we need prayer, that he's got petrol to do that, that he's got a roof over his head, that he's got sustenance on his table, that takes you and me, family. Therefore, in terms of the purpose of giving, it's to give to support the ministers. Amen? It says in 1 Timothy 5, 17, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially when they labor in the word and doctrine. This is all biblical what I'm speaking to you about. Amen? Now we see the vision of this church. The vision of Bethel Full Gospel Church is to be a lighthouse in this community. Now many of the times you would see the banner that's placed up in our church and if you've been to our church time and time again, you would have caught this, that this is what our vision is. Now how do you preach the love of Jesus Christ to a person that is needy, to a person that is standing on the street side, to a person that has not had a meal for the last week? How do you preach the love of Jesus to the sick? Amen. To one that has no food without showing and without reaching out to that person in the point of their need. Amen. Um, James 2:14 to verse 17 so says, suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you say to them, go in peace, my child, go in peace, my brother, keep warm and be well fed but does nothing about their physical needs. What good is it? Amen? We need to act in the point of a person's need. In their time of need, out of your need, you need to bless somebody at their point of their need. And this is what this church does. You've seen many activities that we have done in terms of reaching out to the community, even in our church, to our very members, our very loved ones. It takes money to do that. It takes finances to put that together, family. It takes you and me. It takes our giving. It takes us working together to bring in the tithe, to bring in the offering so that we can collect Actively help those that are out there. Amen. I can't do it on my own. The leadership of this church can't do it on my on our own. It's not going to take pastors tithing only to do it. It's going to take collective collaboration between you, the family of Big L, 
and me to help us together to see to the needs. And I can tell you, there are very many of us that are out there. There are many people on the roadside, in the streets, in our homes that need help today. Amen. Are you with me so far? So no matter how much we preach and no matter how much we teach the gospel, their mouths are still going to be hungry. They are still going to not have a, you know, clothes on their backs. This is what the church is there for, to meet and reach out to the less fortunate. This takes money, yours and mine. It takes heart co condition, it takes compassion, and this is what pleases God. The blessings come down. Amen. Luke verse 6, uh, 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 chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, we know it, we sing it. It says, Give, and it will be given unto you. Press down, shaking together, running over. Amen. Proverbs 19 verse 17 says, Whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord. Amen. And then lastly, the purpose of tithes and offerings is to supply God's house. You know in the Old Testament family, and the pastors that are out there with me um, will, will, will confirm this. In the Old Testament, the, 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 the Israelites were commanded they were commanded to bring in their tithe to the temple and they did it joyfully. They did it without hesitation. Why? Because they received the blessings. And today the same applies here, here and now. The temple or the church of God is the temple. Amen. And we're saying to you today, this is the place where we need, where we worship and we receive our spiritual help from. The church facilitates Amen. Many things. It's an organization and it needs to be supported. We have so many initiatives. This very initiative that we are working on right now, this online platform that you have an opportunity to actually attend church online. It takes money. It takes effort. It takes putting this together. We have so many other initiatives that we want to do. We want to rope in the women's uh, uh, ministry to have their own Zoom meetings. We want to have Bethel Braves to come online and have their own little interaction session with the kids. We want the men to collaborate and to come together on a platform, on an online platform. It doesn't mean that we're not seeing each other face to face. That church doesn't go on. It does. Amen. And it takes the finances. It takes yours and my finances to make this happen today. So family, Malachi 3.10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that they may be meet in mine house. And prove me now, here with, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon you. Finally, family, the purpose we tithe is because we love God. I love Jesus, and I know you love Jesus today. And I know you love God. And I know that you're earnestly seeking Him in all ways. It pleases God when we, when we continue to do what is right. It pleases Him. You recognize him as your eternal father. You recognize him as the eternal one that created the universe, that created the heavens and everything that is in it. Amen. And you also know that he is the only one that knows what's best for you. So let's not hesitate today. Let's not hold back. Let's, let's remember what the purpose is that we're giving today. Let's remember the promises that God gave us, that we are entitled to those promises. So today I'm asking you, get out your money apps, get out your cell phones, log into our, 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 our website. The banking details is rolling on your screen right now. Have a look at it. We're going to send out balls with our banking details. Don't hesitate, family. Don't, this is promised unto you. It will be doing you good and it will be doing the church that you serve good. Let's close our eyes today. Even as you prepare your seed, as you prepare your seed to give, I pray this morning hour that God is going to bless you, that he's going to extend his hand over you and your family. That even as you prepare your seed, that you will give your seed an assignment this morning. That that assignment once completed, we will see and rejoice with the benefits out of it. 
that we remember what the purpose of giving is today and that we will not hold back that we will give cheerfully and even in our giving we will remain joyful because we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength and God knows that we need strength from above to carry us through the days that are coming through so today Lord Jesus I pray father God for every hand and every heart that is prepared to give today that you will bless it in abundance today that your overflow father God will be seen in every single home that is represented on online church today we thank you now father for your word and we pray that your word will find a, an abiding place in each of our hearts that we will give accordingly father God cheerfully not withholding anything in Jesus precious name amen amen thank you family and be blessed this morning amen Greeting once again, family of God. Thank you so much for being with us. Um, I'm just going to go through the announcements this morning. Um, and just to reiterate um, a couple of things so that uh, you are still aware of uh, what is happening within uh, Bethel Full Gospel Church. And this is what we hear. So just to mention that we're still within our lockdown period and we are continuing with church online and i hope and pray that you have been enjoying yourself that you've been logging on that you've been clicking and liking and that you've been leaving your comments so please continue to join us um, again like i said um, because we're not meeting face to face it really doesn't mean that church stops church online is there and uh, we're making it as interactive and as real as possible so please link in there's other services that you can link in other than our sunday morning services which is on our youtube um, platform at 9 a.m um, together with that we have now our wednesday prayer meetings which we have initiated um, which happens at 7 p.m and that is on the zoom platform now family it's really easy you just need to download the zoom app you click on the link that is sent to you you'll be invited into the zoom session and it's really interactive prayer meetings like we used to look at each other and see each other and pray for each other and listen to the word this is how interactive our prayer sessions is and we all need a midweek fuel up session so please join us on our zoom platform for our midweek prayer meetings which is on Wednesday together with that this Wednesday our pastor Tians is going to be taking us through Holy Communion so I encourage each and every one of you in your respective homes to please set up your little um, Holy Communion tables and he will walk us through Holy Communion so on Wednesday 7 p.m. together with the prayer meeting we will be doing Holy Communion together with that then a family we've um, we've done a little bit of uh, enhancements and upgrading to our website um, so those of you that have been on our website you will see that there's a little bit more interaction um, it allows for a little bit more interactiveness on the website there's a lot more information that's been uploaded on there um, a few more links so please communicate circulate our website details to your friends and families that are out there um, get them to link in um, all of the teachings are uploaded onto our website as well there's a place where you can go in and you can put your prayer requests um, there's salvation requests on there there's question and answers on there around all the aspects that we are currently facing as well as um, our, our, our current day-to-day -day, um, facilities we've got all of that on there there's a little click on there for your kids an interaction kids corner that you can get your kids involved in as well so please family uh, get linked in get onto our website share the website details and lastly not forgetting we are continuing pushing with our prayer and fasting we are on day number seven and i pray that it is going well with you that you're enjoying the time with the lord that you're making time to sit before the lord to wait on him to listen and to receive from him through your prayer and fasting i pray that you're enjoying the prayer points that's also being shared with you and please do share them with the rest of your friends and family that are outside everybody needs jesus I pray that you've been blessed, that you will take cognizance of the announcements, and we'll see you again next week, Sunday. God bless you. May the love of God the Father 
and the grace of Jesus Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you until he comes again. Amen. Amen.